Hi everyone. Right, today I'm going to a new location I've never been to before because I've heard that the Kingfisher has been showing well. Now, I know photographing the Kingfisher, you have to really put the hours in and you have to be very patient, but we'll have a go and I'll photograph all the things and I'll video things as I'm going along and uh, we'll see what we can get. Okay, what I want to talk to you about today is what I call my walkabout setup. What I use is a 400mm Prime, this is a Canon 5.6, I've got my 1DX on the back of it and I always use when I'm handheld, when I'm walking around I don't just handhold, yeah, I always use a support and what I've got is if you see this gimbal, you can you can pay hundreds of pounds for a gimbal. Now this one's just a cheap one off a well-known auction site, uh, brand new, and about thirty pounds. So I've used that, and what that does when that's on a monopod, what it gives you is the ability when you've got your clamp undone and you can move that way and that way you can go for birds in fly beautifully no problem at all so that's the setup that I always use but another thing I want to talk to you about is my settings now when I'm walking about it is something can just pop up really quick so what I do in the past I've told you about I'm on AV aperture priority now, with this setting, I actually set it into my custom setting. So if you read about your custom setting, what you can do is program everything into one button. And I program it into one button there. And when I press that one button, it switches to TV or S on other cameras. That's where you control the shutter speed. The camera will control the F-stop, but here's the thing, go into ISO auto and once you're in auto it'll do everything for you on the ISO but you've got a setting on the shutter speed and what I do is I put that at one thousandth of a second so I'm on auto ISO so what will happen is I'll always be fast enough for that shot because the ISO will adjust itself yeah and when I've, what I've done is, because I've programmed it into this one button, I've actually programmed plus one uh, stop of exposure compensation. And the reason I've done that is because if I get a bird in flight coming quick, I can press that one button, it'll go to a thousandth of a second, auto ISO, but also it'll be a plus one stop of exposure compensation for the sky so you don't get it silhouetted now when you take a picture at that you quick look and glance on on the back if it's still silhouetted you thought you can just plus you can do plus two uh stops of compensation so that's the beauty of it so i mean tv thousandth of a second and then i just press the back focus focus on the bird take the shot have a quick look it's fine bosh just with it that way you're going to get more shots. So that is an instant way of being able to take a picture.
you've always got to be prepared when somebody tells you that there's something been cited that you're going to have to photograph something else or you're going to have to be patient and you're going to have to stick around quite a while. This particular kingfisher did a flyby about three or four times in front of us and then eventually, fortunately, he landed on a branch right next to us and was able to get some fabulous shots. So you've just got to keep, you've just got to keep going. Um, there's plenty to photograph on this particular site and you never know what's going to fly by and if you can uh, lock on it, you can get a good shot. So I really enjoy uh, photographing kingfishers. Um, there's something that you never tire of seeing. There's absolutely hundreds of thousands of people that's never actually seen a kingfisher. And because I do wildlife photography, I've seen hundreds. It's incredible. Um, and I think anybody who does see a kingfisher for the first time will always remember that first time that they do see one. Um, I've, the longest I've photographed one for, to get one that was diving and coming out of the fish, was 27 hours. That was three nine hour sessions before I got the shot that I wanted. But I, I finally got it, I'll show you. Well, when I say you never know what you're gonna get, in all the years I've been doing this, I've never seen a terrapin. Now, I've heard about terrapins. Um, I think people, they uh, decide they don't want them as a pet anymore and they release them into lakes. And blow me, I'm looking round, and there's a little bit of a, a mound and a terrapin's come out and he's sunbathing. And that's the first time I've seen one. So uh, I've got some nice shots, I've got a bit of video of him. Um, but you never know, we've traveled uh, from Nottingham up to Yorkshire to get this. Um, well worth the journey, thoroughly enjoyed it and I think you'll agree it makes a nice day. good as that so that was the second time around yeah the first time got some nice shots beautiful blue background because they wanted a cloud in the sky so the reflection was beautiful and blue now it's later on in the afternoon and as you know you don't photograph in the afternoon unless your name's Mark Blake because I always have done yeah on this one it was silhouetted because of the Sun being right above so I had to go plus two and a third stops on the exposure compensation, but this is what's turned out. So I'm happy with that. 
I've got to see it again. I've got I've managed to film it. So yeah, happy days. Really enjoyed today. I hope you've enjoyed today. Um, thanks for coming along with me. If you have enjoyed it, please subscribe, maybe hit the like button and leave a comment. Bye now.